Hello friends, this is Victor here. Welcome back to the Intelligent Research Channel. In today's video, I'm going to analyze Supermicro stock. I will explain whether I think Supermicro stock is still a buy or stay away from it. As always, I'd like to give you more context first. Supermicro has been one of the best performing stocks over the past three years, thanks to its very close partnership with NVIDIA. Just like NVIDIA, Supermicro's server and storage systems business is benefiting the most from the current AI revolution. In fact, Supermicro has even outperformed NVIDIA over the past three years. For example, over the past one year, Supermicro outperformed NVIDIA, AMD, and S&P function by a very large margin. Over the past three years, Supermicro outperformed NVIDIA, AMD, and the S&P function by a huge margin. Supermicro used to be a small cap stock, now its market cap is well over 50 billion. Recently, right before making this video, the S&P 500 added Supermicro to the index. This means many large index funds and ETFs that track the S&P 500 will start investing in Supermicro. So here are several important questions you should ask if you're interested in Supermicro. Will Supermicro's hyper growth continue going forward, or Supermicro's very high growth rates will slow down a lot going forward? And is Supermicro stock overwhelmed now? I will answer these questions in this video by talking about these topics. First, I will give you a quick stock portfolio update. You will learn about why this personal stock portfolio is outperforming the S&P function by a very large margin. Then, I will talk about Supermicro's biggest risk, Supermicro's long-term goals prospect, Supermicro stock valuation, and will I buy Supermicro stock? If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent stock analysis and investing videos a week that will help you become a great investor. Each video usually takes me 20 to 30 hours to make, so if you like this channel and want to support it, check out my Patreon blog in the video description. Our goal is to help all our members become multi-millionaires through investing. Once you become a premium member, you can follow all the stocks I'm investing in for the long term. Follow my personal stock portfolios, watch my investing tutorial videos, and download the latest intrinsic valuation models for all the stocks I'm analyzing, so you will know when a stock becomes undervalued, fairly valued, or overvalued now. Also, you will have access to my latest stock ratings for all the stocks I'm analyzing. The link is in the video description. Take a look, let's start. Before talking about Supermicro's biggest risk, I want to give you a quick stock portfolio update. I always show this stock portfolio in many of my videos. This is to show you my long-term investing strategy over time. I also have other portfolios that have the same stocks and the same investing strategy as this portfolio. Starting next month, I will be using another online brokerage platform because the broker I've been using is being acquired by another bank. So starting next month, you will see this portfolio separated into several accounts. The new brokerage platform I will be using does not have a page that combines all the accounts together, but all the stocks will be the same. This portfolio has been outperforming the S&P function by a large margin because I have invested in many outstanding businesses such as Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Mastercard, Visa, TSMC, ASML, and Media and Meta. Most of these outstanding businesses have very large economic moats and great long-term business prospects. Most of them are the market leaders in their sectors. They also generate the most revenues, operating profits, and free cash flows. You may notice that most of them are mega cap tech companies. Many of them have very large exposure to high performance computing, cloud computing, AI, and semiconductor. I started investing in many of them several years ago because I knew that semiconductors will continue to be the most important industry over the next 10 years. I was right. For example, without the most advanced semiconductor companies such as TSMC, ASML, NVIDIA, and AMD, there wouldn't be AI or specifically generative AI. So I was very lucky to invest in many of these outstanding AI and semiconductor companies much earlier, even before ChatGPT came out. This is my prediction. I believe the current AI revolution is even bigger than the internet revolution during the 1990s. We will need a lot more compute and IT infrastructure around the world to support the current AI revolution going forward. I believe we're only at the beginning of the AI revolution. Supermicro is one of the companies that is benefiting the most from the current AI revolution. I don't have Supermicro in my stock portfolios. I actually missed out on buying Supermicro last year. So what are Supermicro's biggest risks? 
First, did you know that Supermicro purposely overstated its revenues and understated some of its expenses in order to meet its quarterly guidance before? The SEC fined Supermicro for violating accounting rules, booking revenues in advance, understating certain expenses, and not establishing proper internal controls. This is what happened. According to the Wall Street Journal, Supermicro improperly accelerated revenue recognition and reported in a variety of ways. The regulator said that the company books sales on goods sent to warehouses and not yet delivered to customers, ship goods to customers prior to customer authorization, and ship incorrectly assembled goods to customers. Also, back in late 2018, Supermicro was not able to fix its internal controls and financial reporting issues on time, so the company was delisted from the Nasdaq. Then in January 2020, Supermicro was relisted on the Nasdaq again after fixing its internal controls and financial reporting issues. Of course, this is the past. Supermicro's accounting procedures and internal controls are likely much better now. I usually don't like companies that misstated financials before. I think this is a risk we should be aware of, even though these accounting issues are likely fixed. Second, Supermicro's gross margin has been a downward trend in recent quarters. The company has been focusing more on getting market share by offering lower prices than competitors. Over the longer term, Supermicro's management is targeting a gross margin of 14% to 17%. This suggests that Supermicro's gross margin can still drop more going forward if the company wants to gain more market share by lowering prices. Here's the important part you should know. Supermicro competes with other major data center system makers such as Dell, HP Enterprise, Lenovo, IBM, and Cisco. If Supermicro needs to increase sales, Supermicro often needs to lower prices and be the earliest to market its AI server systems compared to competitors. If Supermicro has a very large economy mode like NVIDIA, Supermicro would not need to lower prices in order to increase its market share in the server market. I think this indicates that Supermicro has a very narrow economy mode in the server market. This is my prediction. I believe Supermicro will likely keep its growth margin fairly low, between 14% and 17% over the next two years, in order to gain more market share in selling AI servers and storage systems to customers. Supermicro is still in the very early growth stage, so the company is prioritizing revenue growth over margin expansion. According to founder and CEO Charles Liang, he believes that Supermicro will be able to keep a very healthy operating margin going forward as the company gains more market share and achieves economies of scale. I think this strategy makes sense if Supermicro can continue growing its revenue faster than its operating expenses, which will lead to higher operating margins over time. Here is Supermicro's biggest risk you should be aware of. Supermicro's revenue is expected to grow more than 100% year over year in fiscal 2024. This triple digit revenue growth is not sustainable. Supermicro's biggest risk is that its revenue growth will eventually slow down to a much more reasonable level. But of course, it's very hard to predict when Supermicro's revenue growth will start slowing down. Here's the important part. Supermicro's current growth is largely depending on the large demand for NVIDIA's AI GPUs and the enormous demand for AI supercomputers that are used for AI training and AI inference. If the demand for NVIDIA's AI GPUs slows down or if the demand for AI workloads slows down, we can expect that Supermicro's server and storage system sales will also slow down. It's very hard to predict how long the current AI boom will last. The opposite is true. As long as there is a very large demand for NVIDIA's AI accelerators and AI supercomputers that are used for intensive AI workloads, then we can expect that Supermicro's server and storage business will continue to grow for many years. I want to show you Supermicro's financials here. I believe Supermicro's operating income is a bit misleading here because it doesn't show how much Supermicro is spending on inventory to support its future growth. For example, in the most recent quarter, Supermicro had a very large increase in operating income, but its free cash flow dropped significantly during the same period. So what happened? If you look deeper at Supermicro's cash flow statement, you will learn that Supermicro increased its inventory spending significantly during the most recent quarters. Management said that they had to grow its inventory by more than $1 billion in order to support the company's growth. Supermicro has been buying a lot more AI GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD in recent quarters because of the enormous demand for AI server systems, such as Supermicro's rack scale server systems. Supermicro's management said this during the most recent earnings call. I think this suggests that Supermicro will likely have very high growth rates over the next several quarters. 
As the market leader, we have been prepared to more than double the size of our current AI portfolio with the coming soon NVIDIA Grace Hopper Superchip H200 and B100 GPUs, L4DS Inferencing Optimized GPUs, AMD MI300X and MI300A, and Intel's Gold 2 and Gold 3 All these new platforms will be ready for high volume production in the coming months and quarters. At the time of making this video, I believe Supermicro has a healthy balance sheet. For example, Supermicro has around 726 million in cash equivalents and 376 million in total debt. This means Supermicro will still have around 350 million in cash left if the company pays off all its debt. But 726 million in cash is not enough to support Supermicro's growth because the company needs a lot more capital to buy more inventory, such as AI GPUs from Nvidia, AMD, and even Intel. Each NVIDIA AI GPU can easily cost well over $25,000. Also, I showed you this earlier. Supermicro's free cash flow is not consistent and not strong enough yet. This is why I believe Supermicro will likely need to raise more cash by issuing more shares going forward. Of course, this will dilute existing shareholders' ownership. We have to be forward-looking when it comes to investing, so let's talk about Supermicro's long-term growth prospects. This is my prediction. I believe Supermicro will still have very high growth rates throughout 2024 and 2025 because of the enormous demand for AI applications, large language models, and AI GPUs that are needed to train and infer the most advanced AI models. As of now, the demand for NVIDIA's AI GPUs is much higher than the supply. NVIDIA is still supply constrained. NVIDIA owns more than 90% of the AI GPU market. If you're a server system builder like Supermicro, you can sell as many AI server systems as you can if you can buy thousands of AI GPUs such as H100, H200, and the upcoming Blackwell AI GPU from NVIDIA. Here's the deal. Based on what I know, Supermicro has a very strong partnership with NVIDIA. This is why Supermicro has been able to buy thousands of AI GPUs from NVIDIA, while many other vendors cannot get enough AI GPUs from NVIDIA. Supermicro's biggest competitive advantage is its time-to-market strategy, or its first-to-market strategy. Compared to competitors such as Dell and HP Enterprise, Supermicro is often the first to release server systems that are based on NVIDIA's latest products. For example, NVIDIA will release its most advanced Blackwell AI GPU this year. This new platform will need a lot of power and liquid cooling. Based on what I know, Supermicro is specialized in building liquid cooling server systems. Supermicro will likely be one of the first companies that will release liquid cool server systems based on NVIDIA's Blackwell platform. Also, most of Supermicro's rack scale systems are very customizable. Supermicro's server and storage portals are like building blocks that allow users to customize and that can have thousands of configurations. Based on what I know, this modular and building block system often allows Supermicro to release products much faster than competitors. In comparison, competitors often have much fewer configurations than Supermicro's server and storage systems. According to the Wall Street Journal, Supermicro's recent dominance in the AI boom, industry executives and NSA also stems partly from its strategy of making electronic building blocks that can be assembled into servers in an almost endless number of configurations. Rivals offer a more limited menu to customers. That flexibility has been an advantage in the AI boom. Developers of self-driving car technology want different server setups than companies making language generation AI systems such as ChatGPT. Supermicro can deliver customized infrastructure for both. Management also said the same thing during the most recent earnings call. It explains Supermicro's biggest advantage, which is being first to market new products much faster than competitors. Our advantage is our building block solutions, and what that means is we're the fastest to market because of the way we have architect our products. So what that means is there's a lot of new technologies that are coming out from many different technology providers. As we expect to gain as we work with AI, be first to market with those. And that first to market advantage helps us to differentiate ourselves as we come out with a complete set of solutions. So we think that's another thing that is always going to play to Supermicro's advantage. Supermicro gave this guidance. Supermicro expects that its full-year revenue will reach between 14.3 billion and 14.7 billion in fiscal 2024. This is my prediction. I believe Supermicro will likely beat its full-year guidance this year because of the enormous demand for AI server systems based on NVIDIA's AI GPUs and because Supermicro has been gaining a lot of market shares from competitors in recent quarters. 
Over the longer term, Supermicro is aiming to grow its annual revenue from around 14 billion a year to 25 billion a year. I think this is achievable as long as the current air boom will last for at least five years and not just a few quarters. Supermicro's current growth is largely dependent on the current air boom. Specifically, Supermicro's current growth is largely dependent on the very large demand for NVIDIA's AI GPUs and AI supercomputers that are used for heavy AI workloads, such as AI training and AI inferencing of large language models. If I have to make an educated guess, I believe the current AI boom will last for at least 5 years or perhaps even longer than 10 years. I said this earlier, I believe we're only at the beginning of the AI revolution. I believe the current AI revolution is even bigger than the internet revolution during the 1990s. For example, many large enterprises and cloud service providers around the world will need to build their AI infrastructures that will need a lot more AI accelerators and AI supercomputers from NVIDIA and AMD. Many countries are aiming to achieve their AI sovereignty. They don't want the US to be the only leader in AI. The next biggest AI breakthrough will be Artificial General Intelligence or AGI. Countries around the world want to protect their own data, their own culture, and their own AI infrastructures because of national security concerns. This is why I think the current AI boom or AI revolution will last for at least the next several years. AMD CEO Dr. Lisa Su predicted that the AI server market will grow from 45 billion in 2023 to as much as 400 billion by 2027. As the AI server market grows bigger, I believe this will benefit Supermicro over the long run. I want to show you these consensus estimates from Seeking Alpha. I always like to use Seeking Alpha's consensus estimates because I want to know each company's expected growth rates going forward. I want to know whether Supermicro will likely have very high growth rates going forward or its growth rates will likely slow down a lot going forward. In this case, Supermicro's value is expected to grow over 100% year over year in fiscal 2024. This matched Supermicro's full year guidance. Then Supermicro's value is expected to slow down much more over the next two years. Realistically, a triple digit revenue growth rate is not sustainable. I think Supermicro's revenue growth will slow down to double digit rates starting next year. Of course, it's very hard to predict Supermicro's revenue growth over two years, so I will not look at these expected growth rates after two years. In terms of EPS forecast, Supermicro's EPS is expected to grow well over 80% year over year in fiscal 2024. Then its EPS growth is expected to slow down much more going forward. I want to show you this valuation comparison here. We are comparing Supermicro's valuation to NVIDIA, AMD, Dell, and HP Enterprise. Here you can see that Supermicro's 4 PE and 4 Enterprise Value to EBITDA are much higher than NVIDIA's 4 PE and 4 Enterprise Value to EBITDA. NVIDIA is much more profitable than Supermicro. NVIDIA also has very high growth rates similar to Supermicro. More importantly, Supermicro needs NVIDIA to succeed. NVIDIA does not really need Supermicro because NVIDIA has many other partners such as Dell and HP Enterprise that can also build AI servers for customers. I think this valuation comparison suggests that Supermicro is likely overweight at the time of making this video. I want to show you how to calculate Supermicro stock in Chase Y here, so you will know when Supermicro becomes undervalued, fairly value, or overvalued. If you want this intrinsic valuation model, you can download it from my Patreon blog. The link is in the video description. These are the key assumptions in this calculator. First, I'm not using a DCF model to estimate Supermicro's intrinsic value because Supermicro does not have consistent free cash flows yet. I'm using these two very simple valuation models to calculate Supermicro's interest value. I'm using a 4 revenue valuation model and a 4 EPS valuation model. Then I take the average of both models to estimate Supermicro's interest value per share. First, Supermicro's revenue is expected to reach as much as $21 billion in fiscal 2025. Based on my 4 revenue valuation model here, I believe Supermicro's interest value should be around $52 billion for the entire company or around $850 per share. Second, Supermicro's EPS is expected to reach around $31 per share in fiscal 2025. Based on my 4 EPS valuation model, I believe Supermicro's intrinsic value should be around $718 per share. If we take the average of both valuation models here, I believe Supermicro's intrinsic value should be around $784 per share. Just to compare, Morningstar gave Supermicro a much higher fair value of $932 per share. This means I believe Supermicro is overvalued by a lot at the time of making this video. 
So will I buy Supermicro stock? My answer is it will depend on the price. If it's over value, I wouldn't buy it. I missed out on buying Supermicro last year. I don't want to FOMO to buy Supermicro now when I think it's likely over value. But if Supermicro drops below my interest value estimate, I will only buy a very small position because of the risk I talk about in this video. Based on the valuation comparison I showed you earlier, I believe NVIDIA is much more underwired compared to Supermicro. NVIDIA is very profitable and has a much larger economic mode compared to Supermicro. Here's the important part. Supermicro needs NVIDIA to succeed, but NVIDIA does not need Supermicro in order to succeed. If I had to pick between NVIDIA and Supermicro, I would continue buying more NVIDIA shares over time whenever NVIDIA is undervalued. Now, all these are only my opinions and my analysis is based on my research. They are not financial advice. There are always risks associated with investing. I think it's very important to invest in what you know and not speculate. You will need to do your own research and do your extra due diligence first before investing anything. Thank you for watching this video and supporting our channel. This is Victor from the Intelligent Research channel and I will see you in the next video.